Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I think that sums it up pretty good. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I was going down for the last time. Yeah. My, my, my. Whenever his nail scarred hand reached down and pulled me up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. Yeah. From the waters he lifted me. Yeah. Now safe am I. <laughs> Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Maybe you didn't get that. I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within. Seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My, my, my. Thank God for His amazing grace today. Yeah. Amen. That saved us. My, my, my. His precious blood that washed us and cleanses us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, we all know what today is. Today is Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. You're the closest they can get to it. Amen. Come on. My, my, my. We know for sure that He rose up out of the grave. Hallelujah. And most of the time, so many today, let me give you the scripture that we're going to be going to so you can go ahead and find it. Luke, the 24th chapter. So many today look at the crucifixion as defeat and the resurrection as victory. Come on. And that's because our old carnal mind, that's about the only way it can figure things out. Amen. We can't see much victory in a man getting beaten beyond recognition. Amen? True. We can't see much victory in a man being crowned with thorns and drug up Golgotha's heel and nailed to a cross. And one of the prophets said he was beyond description by the time they got through with him. You couldn't even tell if he was a man or not. Because they had ripped his skin to shreds. Amen? Covered in blood. True. So, man in his carnal way of thinking would think, well... That is defeat. Mm -hmm. But on resurrection morning, when He comes forth out of the grave in resurrection power, that is the victory. Yeah. Yes. Nothing can really be farther from the truth. Come on. Because the victory was won on the cross of Calvary. Amen? All right. Whenever He said it is finished, yeah. those words that, shook, that were heard around the world Come on. within the next couple of thousand years, Still being heard today. Amen. True. It is finished. Yes. The victory has been won. Amen. Amen. There was no fictitious three days that he wrestled with the devil. Amen. Amen. When he said it was finished on the cross of Calvary, he meant what he said for the day, but he said what he meant. True. The work that I came to do, the reason that I was born, right. the cause that I came, Amen. The work that the Father sent me to do, Amen. it is finished. Absolutely. And the Father Himself put the exclamation point on it mm. when He ripped the temple veil in twain from top to bottom and He opened up the throne room for mankind once more to be able to have fellowship with God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It is finished. That's how we know the work was done. The temple veil was not rent in twain on resurrection morning. Amen. True. It was written in twain whenever he said it is finished. Yeah. And he gave up the ghost. And his blood was accepted as the, on the final authoritative altar of the cross of Calvary as the spotless, sinless Lamb of God yeah. that takes away the sin of the world. That is when the temple veil was written in twain. Mm -hmm. That is whenever the work was finished. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. There was no smack down cage match in hell yeah. between the devil and Jesus yeah. and he barely made it out alive. No, 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 no. Every principality was defeated at Calvary. Every devil was defeated at Calvary. Every foe and every enemy was defeated at Calvary. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Prove that, preacher. I was hoping somebody would ask me to. <laughs> 
Colossians, the second chapter. Stay where you're at in Luke because that's where we're going to go. You can keep that with your finger going over to this scripture if you want to or just listen to me read it. We've looked at it many times. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In his finished work on the cross. When he said it is finished, it brought an end to the dreaded penalty that sin had over mankind. All right. If you will accept his work. If you will accept what he did. If you don't, and if you reject Jesus, you still have to pay the penalty yourself. Yes, sir. The penalty for sin is death. Amen. Jesus Christ died for you, right. or you can die for yourself. And I'm talking about you spending eternity in hell. It is appointed that a man wants to die. That kind of death, none of us are going to get out of. True. But we're talking about death because of your sins. We're talking about paying for your sins yourself. Amen. In an eternity in hell if you reject Jesus Christ. Right. Brother Billy, that's a narrow-minded statement. Well, it's a narrow way. Yes. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. <clears throat> so when he said it is finished, mm. it ended the separation between man and God. Now, once again, man could have fellowship with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. When the temple veil was written in twain, Brother Sleece, another veil, as it were, or another door took its place. Listen to me. When the temple, the temple veil is what separated the Holy of Holies mm -hmm. from mankind. The priest couldn't go up but once a year, and then when he did, he had to make sure all of his T's were crossed and his I's were dotted. If not, they drag him out of here now they're dead with a rope tied on his foot. Right. But that veil was done away with, spiritually speaking, because the Jews, they sold it up, went on about their business till the temple was destroyed. It wasn't enough that he ripped it in half. They put it back together mm -hmm. till the temple was destroyed. But anyway, that temple veil was replaced with another veil, so to speak, another door. And men can have access now to the throne room, not because of their own righteousness and their own works, but because of the righteousness and the works of the door that now took the place of the veil. Jesus Christ, he said, I am the door. I am the door. If you get in, you have to come through me. If you get into the throne room, you have to come through Jesus Christ. Before, you had to go through the veil and you had to enter there on your, on your own works. It depended upon you. It depended upon the priest. It depended upon how, if he had done everything just right, if he had got this right, if he had got that right, if he had made sure the blood that he was taking was pure, if he had made sure he had applied it to here and there, and made sure he had done all of the ordinances and everything just right, mm -hmm. then he could go in. Now we can go in boldly right. before the throne room of God through the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Only way you can get in there. That's the only way you can go. True. You can't go any other way. Amen. One day you will stand before the judgment seat of God but the only escape from that is the blood of Jesus. Otherwise, you will stand there miserable, blind, naked, and you will pay for your sins yourself because you didn't put your faith in Jesus Christ. Really, really the sin that will send you to hell is not drinking, not smoking, not doping, not all this other stuff. The thing that's going to condemn you, not approving of those things, and you know better than that. The thing that's going to condemn you is the fact that you rejected Jesus Christ. All right. Amen. He's the way to heaven. Accepting Him is the way to heaven. Rejecting Him is the way to hell. Yes, sir. When you reject Jesus Christ and His finished work, that is what's going to condemn you to an eternal damnation in hell. Amen. So we know that the work was finished on the cross of Calvary. We know today that we do not have to rely upon our own works. We know today that, Brother Dave, we don't have to be good enough. Should we try and live right? Well, certainly. You should try to do the right things. Amen. Should you be complacent in the fact that, well, none of us are perfect, so I'm going to have this sin? No, 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 no. You should hate sin. True. Amen. Amen. 
True. The, the Jesus inside of you hates sin. Exactly. Amen. Doesn't like it. Doesn't approve of it. Amen. Shouldn't make you feel comfortable. If you're comfortable in your sin, we might ought to check out your salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit will convict you. It will prick your heart. So we know today that the work was finished there. We know that it's not in us, that it's all in Him. Amen. And our faith in Him. We know that there was no question that He was going to come out of the tomb on the third day. So there is no way that there could have been some doubt, some wrestling match, as the false doctrine teaches that He died, He went to hell, He wrestled with the devil. I want you to find me one scripture that says the devil's in hell in the first place. Amen. Find me another scripture where it says he has the keys to hell. You're not going to find it. Yet they'll base their entire doctrine of what happened those three days but time, but from the time that he gave up the ghost on the cross of Calvary and the time that he rose from the tomb on the third day. They will base their entire doctrine on something you can't find in the Bible. There was no wrestling match in hell. The work was finished. The resurrection was included in his finished work on the cross. Listen to me and listen to this careful. The the resurrection, let me, let me get this. <clears throat> the work of the cross was not dependent upon whether he came out of the grave. Listen to me. The fact that he came out of the grave was dependent upon the work that he did on the cross. Listen to me. The, when we talk about the finished work of the cross, we include the resurrection in that. Because whether he was going to come out of that tomb or not depended upon whether his blood was accepted on the cross. And we know that it was because the Father told us it was by ripping the temple veil in twain from top to bottom. So we know today that the work of the cross was not dependent upon, oh, I, I hope he comes out of the tomb because if he don't, then he died in vain. No, we knew. We knew already because his blood was accepted. The Father said, this is it. Jesus said, it is finished. This is the work the Father sent me to do. It is done. And it was revealed through the ripping apart of the veil in the temple. Amen. So the work of the cross was not dependent upon whether He came out of the grave. The fact that He came out of the grave was dependent upon the work that He did on the cross of Calvary. The resurrection was not dependent upon some fictitious battle that took place within those three days. Now what happened within those three days? We don't know everything. We know for a fact that he went to paradise because he told the thief on the cross, today I will be with you in paradise. Amen. So we know for a fact that he went to paradise and I got a feeling when he got there, they probably had some kind of church. It might not have been the kind of church we, we talk about having today, but I bet somebody did some jumping and some hooting and some hollering. Amen. Amen. Abraham probably said, hey, wait a minute. That's the one that I was talking about whenever I said God will provide himself a lamb. Amen. That's the one that I had the faith in that was the one to come. That's the promised seed. Amen. Hallelujah. Adam probably said that's the one that God told us about in the garden. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. He's the promised one. So when he got to paradise, they probably had church. Amen. It probably wasn't some dead service. They probably had church, Brother Dave. Amen. Amen. True. So we know that he went to, and we know that the, he, he himself told us over and over again that he would die and that he would be raised. Amen? He told his disciples, destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up again. He, told, he said that in their presence. He told them that as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. He taught his disciples that the Son of Man is to be delivered into the hands of men, they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. He, said, he told them in Luke, saying that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. Over and over he told them, they will crucify me. But the story don't end there. Amen? Over and over they, he told them, they will tear this temple down. I will rebuild it. He told his disciples, he said, no man takes my life from me. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it back up again. Amen. Over and over, he made sure they knew that the cross was not the final, the, the final, the ending of the story. 
He wanted them to know that as they stood there in the grief that he knew that they would be in and the sorrow that they would be in, he wanted them to know that the story did not end at the cross. He wanted them to know that when they lay me in that tomb, don't give up. Because the third day, I will rise again. The blood had already been accepted. The work had already been finished. He was coming out on the third day and there was no devil, no demon, no principality, no power of darkness that could stop him. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I ain't getting much help this morning. Over and over, he tells them, Brother Dave, yeah. that he's coming back. Come on. They're going to kill me, but I'll, re I'll rise from the dead. Right. I'll be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights, but I'll be back. Amen. Now go with me to Luke 24 and 1. You're probably already there. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now think about this. Here they come to the tomb, which was their tradition, to anoint the body with spices and different things. I don't know what they thought at the time, whether they were even going to be able to get in or not, because the leaders had appointed soldiers to stand guard to make sure nobody stole his body and then said, well, he rose from the dead. See, even the leaders remembered. Even the leaders remembered. The disciples had a hard time remembering this. But even the leaders remembered that he said he was going to come back from the dead. So they said, now all they'd have to do is steal the body and then claim that he rose from the dead. So guard this tomb. So even the leaders remembered that the disciples right now where their day was having, they were having a hard time remembering. Amen. And the ladies, those that followed Jesus, they were having a hard time remembering the words that the Lord had spoke to them. Yeah. They had seen Him, now granted most of them from a distance because only John could be found at the foot of the cross. But they knew that He had been crucified. They knew that he'd been, He had been beaten at the whipping post with the cat of nine tails. Right. They knew that He had been ripped to shreds. They had saw as they lowered the cross into the ground and He hung there between heaven and earth. They had saw Him die, give up the ghost. Amen. So all of that had enveloped them. The sorrow of that had enveloped them to the place to where they had, they had forgotten what He had told them Amen. would happen on the third day. So they go to the tomb. The stone is rolled away. And while they're trying to figure out what's going on, the Bible says and it came to pass in verse 4, and it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them. Now listen to what they said to them. Why seek ye the living among the dead? Now to the flesh, this might have sounded like harsh words and a rebuke to them. They killed him. That's why we're, we're here because they killed our Lord and they, they put him in this tomb. And this angel says, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Listen, this is where I got stuck. <laughs> I was going to take you from the time that they crucified him until the time that he was resurrected, and look at a few of the things that we know happened within those three days. And there's there some scholars who think there are other things that happened, and they have people that disagree with them. And I was going to look a little bit at that, which that doesn't really matter, but I was going to share a little bit of that with you. But then I got stuck. I was over here reading about these ladies that came to the tomb, and the stone was rolled away, and the body was gone, and the angel said, Why well, seek you the living among the dead? And then I got stuck, Brother Dave. This is where I got hung up right here. Right. Couldn't move on much farther than this. He is not here, but He is risen. Brother Sleece, he says, Remember how He spake unto you when He was yet in Galilee. He was saying, Remember what He told you. Remember that He told you, In three days, I'll rise again. Amen. Remember that He told you, Tear this temple down. Three days I will build it up again. 
Remember that he told you his Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. So should the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. Remember the fact that he said he should be, that he's going to be delivered up, he's going to be crucified, he's going to die. Then he's going to rise again. Remember that. And the Bible says, and they remembered. First it says, remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified in the third day. See, they remembered. They had saw Him be delivered into the hands of sinful men. They had saw Him be crucified. But they had forgot that last thing. I'll be delivered into the hands of evil men. I will be crucified. And then their sorrow and their grief had enveloped them to the place to where they had forgot what else He said. But on the third day... I'll rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all of the rest. Matthew puts it this way. They departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples the word, the news. They brought the disciples word that he was not there anymore. He has risen just like he said. So look at this this morning. This is why I got hung up. They came to the tomb sorrowful, in grief, gripped with so much sorrow and anguish that they had forgotten the words that Jesus had spoke to them what was going to happen on the third day. Yes, they will deliver me up to evil men. Yes, they will nail me to a tree. But don't forget, Sunday is on the way. Amen? Sometimes we get in the midst of our battle. Sometimes we get in the midst of our trial. Sometimes we get in the midst of our own three days of, of agony. And we, but, and we forget what His Word has said to us. We become so enveloped and so centered on the problem and the, the, what, what has happened and what is happening that we forget what His Word says is going to happen. Amen? Amen. They can remember what happened. Right. They crucified Him. Right. They can still see the horrific scenes in their mind. Right. They can remember what was happening now. They saw His disciples downcast and depressed and sorrow and grieving. True. They saw all of those who were following Him scattered and leave. And Amen. They can remember what happened. They can remember what was happening now. They needed somebody to remind them the words that He said what was going to happen on the third day. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sometimes we need somebody to remind us when we're going through the valley and it looks like we have no hope. It looks like we are so wrapped up in our own grief. We need somebody to remind us. Yeah, it looks bad tonight. But joy comes in the morning. Amen. The darkest part of any night is just before the dawn. We need somebody to remind us when we feel like things are killing us. That all things work together for my good. Because I love the Lord and I'm the call according to His purpose. They needed somebody to remind them. Yes, He was crucified. Yes, He was put in the tomb. But oh, hallelujah. Remember what He said. On the third day, I'll come up triumphantly over death. I'll I'll come out of the grave. Hallelujah. Amen. That's where I got stuck. That's good preaching. Amen. Remember. Praise the Lord. Remember. Brother Dave, when I call you and I'm feeling low in a snake's belly and it seems like everything has fell apart mm -hmm. and everything has been thrown at me, yeah. remind me. Remind me. Because sometimes the darkness is so thick we forget. Sometimes the trial is so hard we forget. Sometimes the sorrow is so great that we forget that there's a resurrection morning. Sunday's on the way. Amen. Hallelujah. It looks darker than it's ever looked before. But the sun's just about to come up. Hallelujah. They're going to crucify me. They'll bury me. But oh, hallelujah, on the third day. On the third day, I'm coming up Come on. victorious. Come on, I'm coming up out of the grave. Yes. They remembered His words. Amen. That's why the angel said, "Why you? What are you doing here?" Yeah. In essence, that's what he said. All right. What y'all doing here? Amen. Don't y'all remember what he said? Yeah. <laughs> that's what. What are you so gloom for, brother? Don't you remember that we're the winner either way? Don't you remember that to live is for Christ? 
But to die is gain. Amen. Don't you remember that you're the apple of his eye? Don't you remember that he's never seen the righteous forsaken or a sheep begging for bread? Don't you remember that when you get down to the bottom of the mill barrel, that God's mill barrel don't run dry? Amen. Oh. What are you doing here? Yeah. Don't you remember? They remember that he said he was going to be crucified. Mm. They remember the horrific three days that they just went through of loss. Right. But they forgot. They forgot that he said on the third day, I'll rise right. again. Amen. On the third day, I'll rise again. All right. So they came to the tomb in grief and great sorrow. Mm. And they left in a dead heat run mm. with great joy. Yeah. To tell his disciples, he's rose, he's he has risen, mm -hmm. just like he said, yeah. just like he said. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Lord. Sometimes I wonder. Can I preach for just about five more minutes? Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when Elijah ran from Jezebel? Right. Got up there in the cave and was having a pity party. Uh -huh. He was sitting on Brother Sleese's proverbial pity pot. What did the Lord say to him? I'm the last one. Well, yeah, that's what Elijah said. And the Lord said, Elijah? And now he said, What doest thou here, mm -hmm. Elijah? Why are you here having this pity party? All right. The angel said, Why are y'all here looking for the living yeah. among the dead? Amen. Remember what he said. Why are you so glum? Why do you feel so down and out? Why do you feel like you have no hope for tomorrow? Remember what he said. Amen. Remember what his word tells us today. Remember the fact that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, oh yes I know, he holds the future, and life is worth a living just because He lives. Amen. God wants us to remember when we look around at the world and the condition it's in today, and it's, it, it just keeps getting worse and worse. The church ain't doing anything to help 80% of them because they're in as big a mess as the world is. True. Amen. True. I've never seen so much rebuke coming from the church anytime you take a stand against anything. Don't judge. Don't judge. Yeah. Shut up. Mm -hmm. Ain't what the Bible says. We're not supposed to judge in self-righteous judgment, but that has nothing to do with preaching the truth and standing against sin. Amen. So when you look around at the world, the shape it's in, it's mm -hmm. easy to get down about it. Right. But remember what he said. Amen. Remember what he said. Remember what he said. Remember his promises, Brother Tommy. Right. When you feel like you don't know the answer and you don't understand, mm -hmm. remember what he said. They didn't. They felt like they didn't know the answer. They felt like they didn't understand. They felt like their world had came to an end. Amen. Till an angel reminded them, yeah. <laughs> "What are you doing here? Yeah. Don't you remember what he said? He said on the third day I'm coming out. Hallelujah! They rolled the stone up there. They even put a they even put a seal on it from the signet ring of ring of the leader, so that to make sure nobody's to touch that stone. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Nobody can touch that stone. If you walked by there in that day and you saw the seal of the <clears throat> leader, you'd be like, "Oh man, mm -hmm. there's a penalty of death to move that." And the guards were there. Yes. But see, heaven don't have to obey man's orders. Right. The Bible says an angel descended from heaven, Amen. rolled back the stone, and shut down on it. Amen. Hallelujah. So much for your seal. Amen. The stone. And really, really, he didn't roll the stone away to let Jesus out. Right. He rolled the Jesus was already gone. Amen. He rolled the stone away to let them in. Right. Oh. Truth. I know I'm preaching it good when Mama's grinning and shaking her head. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He didn't roll the stone away till later on we find Jesus walking through a wall. Right. Yeah. Into a locked room. Yeah. 
That stone wasn't nothing for him. Yeah, really. The angel didn't roll the stone away to let him out. He rolled the stone away to let them in. Amen. To let them in so they could see he ain't here no more. Hallelujah. He's come up out of the grave just like he said he would. There was nothing stopping it. It had already been spoken into existence. His word will not pass away. His word will never fail. His word is true. He had already spoken. I lay my life down. I will take it back up on the third day. I will walk triumphant out of the tomb. Remember that. Amen. Remember that. Yes. Oh. Praise the Lord. My, my, my. Remember what he said. And I know that's kind of a strange Easter message. But remember what he said. When you're going through the trial, when you're going through the valley, when you find yourself like they were, Amen. engulfed with darkness and sorrow, right. don't get your mind so on what has happened and what is happening that you can't remember what he said is going to happen. All right. The deliverance that's coming. The resurrection that's coming. The victory day that's coming. Amen. Amen. Right. There was no question whatsoever that he was coming out of the grave on the third day. Yes. Never a question. Amen. Once he had finished his work on Calvary, that included the resurrection as a done deal. Amen. That included the resurrection as a done deal. But where he went within those three days. Nobody really knows all of it. We know for a fact that he went to paradise right. because he told the thief, he said, today I will be with you in paradise. paradise. So we know he went to paradise. Others think that he went and preached to the fallen angels because there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about him preaching to those that are captive. Others believe that he was preaching to those that were in paradise. Either way, I think he did some preaching probably. I think probably his message contained at least three words, it is finished. Mm, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, might Amen. They might, he might not have had to say nothing else other than to show up in paradise and say, it is finished. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Now all of those that had faith in Him before the cross could now go to heaven because of His finished work of the cross. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But don't forget the words that he said. Sunday's coming. No matter how bad your life looks today, put your faith in Jesus. Sunday's coming. Amen. He's already promised you, you are the victor. Amen. You're the head, not the tail. Yes. You're the winner, not the loser. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Praise Somebody God. else this morning have something before we go? Well, well that even when...